Chapter 11. Nancy strode up to Tom. Where was the camera stolen from? She asked. Tom looked puzzled. I'm not sure. I believe it was left at the studio or something. In any case, the odds of it being recovered are extremely slim. Well, there's got to be something we can do, Nancy insisted. Can't Bess have the pictures reshot? Fortner turned to Bess and took her hand. Well, I suppose we could try to get you another session with Bogorovsky. You mean you might not be able to? Bess moaned. Even if it can be arranged, you'd have to miss one of the group shots, Tom said. But I've already missed one, Bess protested. Now, let's not get all upset, Tom said in a soothing tone of voice. Tell you what, Bogorovsky is going to be at the sundress shoot this afternoon. We'll talk to him then. Squeezing her hand, he turned to walk out the door. That guy is creepy, Bess said after he'd gone. I know he's trying to be nice, but he seems phony. I know, Nancy agreed. Come on, let's go to lunch, she suggested. Okay, Bess said with a resigned sigh. My stomach was growling all morning. It growled during my photo session. Fortunately, Bogorovsky thought it was his stomach. He said, excuse, I have pizza yesterday. Most of the other models were already eating lunch. Don't let me order anything fattening, Bess said to Nancy as they stepped in. I won't, Nancy said. I'd like to sit with Heather if that's okay with you. I want to get to know her better. Being with Heather will ruin my appetite for sure. Hmm. Bess smiled ironically. The Heather Richards diet. I think I'm on to something. Are these seats free? Nancy asked Heather when they came up beside her. I guess so, Heather said with a shrug. Nancy and Bess sat down and Heather continued eating her lobster salad. That looks good, Bess said, trying to be polite. I think I'll order one. The waiter told me it was the last one, Heather said with a look of false regret. Sorry. Oh well, Bess said with a sigh, looking over the menu the waiter had just brought to the table. <gasps> Choo! Came a volcanic eruption behind her. Hi, Maggie, Bess said brightly. Want to join us? <gasps> Choo! Maggie let out another gigantic sneeze and nodded her head affirmatively. Thanks, she murmured. Sorry about the <gasps> Choo! sneezing. Heather rolled her eyes to the ceiling. I hope whatever you have isn't catching, she said icily. Have you seen a doctor? No, it's just a little cold, Maggie said, embarrassed. Well, being in the contest may make it worse, Heather went on, her voice dripping with phony sympathy. You know, if I were you, I'd think about dropping out so I could get some rest. Thanks for the suggestion, Heather. It's nice that you care, Maggie said, smiling through gritted teeth. Did you hear? Bess began, in what Nancy guessed was an effort to change the subject. My photo negatives were stolen. Oh, no, Maggie moaned. That's awful, Bess. What's going to happen? They're going to try to get me another session with Bogorovsky, Bess explained. But the first session with any photographer is always the best, Heather said. You can redo them, but they're never as good as the first ones. Really? Bess asked. Everyone knows that, Heather said. See you at Grant Park. She pushed her plate away and stood up. After the icy blonde left the table, Maggie, Bess, and Nancy sat in silence. <gasps> that was all they needed. Suddenly, all three of them were giggling their heads off. Nothing like a good sneeze to get rid of tension, Maggie managed to say. The weather had turned warmer that afternoon when the girls arrived at Buckingham Fountain in Grant Park. Nancy had leads to investigate, but she was afraid the saboteur might try something that afternoon. She wanted to be on hand in case she could help. 
Jackie told them that the three-tiered marble fountain was a larger replica of one in the garden at Versailles in France. The pool around the fountain had been drained. The water was shut off until the girls were ready to take their positions on the pedestals that were part of the design. After a few shots, they'd been given umbrellas and the fountain would be turned on. After Jackie directed the models to the trailer, Nancy walked over to where the crew was setting up. Bogorovsky was wandering around, snapping candids until the lights were ready. Nancy noticed Tom Fortner at the far side of the fountain. He was wearing a navy coat with a fur collar and carrying his ever-present briefcase. Tom saw Nancy and gave a stiff wave. Then he turned and Nancy lost sight of him. Not far from the trailer was Bettina. She was talking to the news reporter Nancy had first seen on the pier. Nancy wondered if Bettina was dishing more dirt about the contest. As if to confirm Nancy's suspicions, Bettina moved away from the reporter when she saw Nancy. Seconds later, she was clapping her hands for attention. Let's get started, please, she announced. Would someone please see if the girls are ready? I will, Nancy offered with a smile. Nancy walked over and poked her head in the door of the trailer. Are you ready? she asked. Almost, Bess called out. A wardrobe mistress was busy pinning Bess's dress in the back. It's the wrong size, Bess explained. All the dresses were, except one. Don't worry, the wardrobe mistress muttered, taking a pin from her mouth. They'll look fine. What do you think? Heather Richards asked sweetly, twirling around in a tomato red sundress that fit perfectly and showed off her slender shoulders and narrow waist. Honey, you sure you're not a pro? The wardrobe mistress joked. Heather seemed momentarily taken aback. No, of course not. Professionals aren't eligible for this contest. I just meant that you look great, that's all, the wardrobe lady explained. Let's go, everyone. One by one, the girls stepped past Nancy and walked out of the trailer. From the front, they looked fine, but in the back, their dresses were clipped with safety pins. Trudy Wu watched Heather in bright red step down and let out a growl. How does she do it? Trudy asked. Heather's the one behind everything. Trust me, Bess whispered to Nancy. You've got to be able to prove these things, Bess, Nancy reminded her. Nancy watched the trail of girls cross the drained pool to take their positions standing on the pedestals of the fountain. The red dress is offensive and out of place, Bogorovsky complained to Bettina. That's the way Smash wants it, Bettina said with a shrug. They're paying for the shoot today. Ridiculous, the photographer said. But what do I know? I'm only an artist. All right, young lady in red, move to the pedestal down front, in the center. After Bogorovsky had taken a series of shots, he waved to the crew, who were waiting at the edge of the pool with umbrellas. I'm ready for you, the photographer said. The crew handed each of the models an umbrella. The umbrellas were all made of shiny vinyl in bright, bold colors. At least in this round of photos, Heather wouldn't stand out as much, Nancy thought. All right, let's do it, Bogorovsky shouted. Where's the water, he yelled, looking up again. Coming, we just found the mechanism to turn it on. Let's have it then, Bogorovsky shouted. Instantly, the fountain began spraying far up into the air. Something was terribly wrong. The water coming out of the fountain was a deep, ugly purple. It showered over all the girls, who began shrieking hysterically. Tom Fortner's jaw dropped open. B but he sputtered, that's not water, it's paint. End of chapter 11. <laughs>